Hello my friends and welcome to episode 30 of our Football Manager 2019 Let's Play with Rangers. In the last episode, if you haven't already seen it, ignore the results and go check it out. But if you have seen it, you'll know it was a pretty bad episode. We had two big games and we lost both. Since then, however, we have had another few big games and we have hit the ground running. Um, we first played Aberdeen in the Betfred Cup semi-final, a much rotated side. Wasn't as rotated as I would normally do for the Betfred Cup because I felt that, you know, we needed to get back to winning ways, get back to a big result. So, there was some changes, not as many as normal. We won 2-0, uh, John Hughes and Jadis from the penalty spot, getting us a result there before we went to Motherwell in the league. And another 2-0 victory. Yaris with an early penalty and Dominic Solanke scoring. It was a disappointing second half performance wise, but other than that, a fairly good game. Then we played Hearts, and Hearts started really, really strongly. And in fact, I actually felt they were the better team for the first 25 minutes or so. They got a sending off, which for me was never a sending off. And a couple of minutes after that, a very unusual situation Rob Holding with the cross of dreams. Uh, from a sort of recycled free kick situation, fell to the feet of Manor Solomon, who scored his second of the season before Solanke and Malcolm added before Luke Bratton scored a very bizarre own goal. Not necessarily his fault, he passed it back to the goalkeeper after they couldn't get out their defence with our press in. The goalkeeper just ran away from it and it went in the net. And then Sinji Kagawa came off the bench to score when uh, Casey Palmer got injured just before this game. So. We needed to find some other big players. Um, Jadis has played the last couple, just trying to get his match fitness back up. And Sinji Kagawa came off the bench as a sort of just resting players for the thinner batchy game that we see today. League table wise, we set a point behind Celtic. They had a 0 0 draw against uh, Hibs, I think it was, who sat pretty much bottom of the table at the time. Um, but that 0 0 draw got them off and started moving them up the table a bit. As well as allows us to catch up with Celtic again. So they're still averaging a silly amount of goals per game. They're just under four now. Um, however, it's all good that we're just a point behind after that couple of bad results. We are top of our Europa League group going into this game. Um, if I can find that, I will show you it. Um, there we are, straight away. So we're top of that on head-to-head -head difference against Chelsea. Two points ahead of Fenerbahce and well clear of Zoyra uh, from Ukraine. So today's game is quite big, you know, a win today would put us um, top ahead of Chelsea still, but it would give us and Chelsea a big gap to Fenerbahce with two games going. Um, we'd almost seal qualification, we'd just need another point or so, I think. In fact, another point would do it, we could have the head-to-head -head over Fenerbahce. So a win today puts us a point away from qualification in the last two games with a home game against uh, Chelsea and an away game to Zoyra to go. So let's get to pitch side. And get on with this match. Um, Fenerbahce are looking a bit more defensive lining up wise than they did in the last game. I remember them being a bit more adventurous. Um, but it looks like they're just going to be looking for a sort of defensive game. Launching it forward to Nicolo Katanic. Up top, our team sees us having David Rea um, leading the goalkeeper in role. Uh, with Tavernier, our former captain at right back. Rob Holding and Katic, the central defensive pair, which is... Not the first time this season, but one of the few times this season that they've done that. I've decided to put Ross McCrory in at the holding rope with Borna Barisic at left back. The reason for that is I rested Ross McCrory against Hearts and when I brought him on um, for, I think it was Fosu Mensa. No, was it Ross or I played? I, I did play somebody who I haven't normally played in that holding role and I brought McCrory on. And I was very, very impressed with the McCrory holding Katic lineup, so I want to test them in a proper game together. We've got Elena and Jadis in the midfield, which isn't ideal. They're both left-footed. We've got Gold on the bench as well for that role. He is also left-footed, uh, although Fellaini could come on there if need be as well. We've got Malcolm, Solomon and Solanke leading off our front three. So we're going to get into today's game. Um, we've been back on a bit of form, so hopefully, you know, we're coming into this with a couple of big wins under our belts. A win today, as I said, in the sort of build-up is massive for us and would put us in a very, very good position for going through uh, this Europa League group, which I don't think... Did we even make the Europa League group stage in the first season? I don't think we did. Last year, we obviously got to the Champions League last 16, so there is a bit of potential in Europe from this side. Um, and this would give us a big, big step towards the way 
Um, actually, I don't actually know if we'd have the head to head. We need a two goal cushion here. Um, and then they would, would have away goals, I think, as Carlos Elena is just wide from uh, the man on loan from Barcelona. Good effort, though. Um, in fact, it was a very good effort. I thought it was going to go in for a little while. I'm going to demand a bit more, see if we can get something out of the players here, because it seems to have worked recently as Katic heads forward to McCrory, Jadis, Elena. Brings it forward. Oh, it's a beautiful dinked ball. And the goalkeeper's had a shocker there. It's disallowed, that's why. Oh. Is he offside here? He's not, you know. That's onside for me. That is onside for me. Not happy, ref. That's the third goal we've had disallowed for offside in this Europa League campaign. I'm genuinely not sure how many of them have been correct. Um, Nicola Katic has got a stub toe. So we'll bring him off at half time because I don't like having injured players. We'll bring Rocky Bashiri on. But we'll go until half time. Chelsea and Zoyrov. Zoyra uh, drawing uh, in their game. And Jadis plays it forward into Baris. That's a great ball. Baris at Gen. No, nobody in the middle though. It comes out to Carlos Elena. Plays it out to Tavernier. We've got people in the middle now, but the ball doesn't come into the middle. McCrory, Tavernier, Carlos Elena. Back out to Tavernier, whipped in, Solanke, oh, it's saved, and onto the post, the net rippled, I thought it was in. As Chelsea take the top of the group again, as they've got another goal to put them ahead at Stamford Bridge. Um, oh. Right, I'm going to go with an assertive, I'm far from police, see if we can get something going. Rocky Bashiri will come on for Nikola Katic, we can still change things in defence if we really have to, I don't really want to. Um, but, you know, because we've got uh, McCrory on the pitch, we can always pull him back into defence and bring Fellini on into that role. As Barris has just picked up an injury now. Now, that's not good. As Holding hits the post now. Uh, in fact, Barris, that's a tight gaff. That's too important an injury to risk for the rest of this game. We'll bring Gianluca Itter on. He is very, very good in this role. I can't remember if he's had a game on camera or not yet. I think he has. Um, but I've been very, very impressed with him since he came in. I don't feel we miss Barisic as much uh, this season as compared to what we did last year. I think we need to start going a bit more attacking here. Um, because it's not working right now. I think I might even bring on Marin for Solomon. In fact, I've just, is this going to do that full match thing now as well? Um, Marin for Solomon. Confirm sub. And we're watching full match because it's done that. That's so annoying. I don't know what is causing this bug. But it's so annoying. It's done it to me literally two or three matches in a row now as well. And sometimes you don't even notice until you're literally sat watching it passing around. And even I'd done it actually the last game when that own goal happened. I was like, they were just packing it across their defence with us pressing a little bit. And it was like, I've switched it off full match. When are you going to activate this highlight? And eventually they did. It obviously they went in the back of the net, so it was a normal highlight. But it wasn't a normal highlight to watch, if that makes sense. Um, this looks like it's going to be a disappointing, a bit dominating 0-0, um, which means we're going to be needing points. Is oh, um, from the last two games, we're still going to be two points clear, I think, of Fenerbahce, two points behind Chelsea with a home game to Chelsea to go and. And a away game to Zoira. So two fairly tough games. But I cannot believe that we have only taken one point in two games off Fenerbahce here. Because, in fact, zero, yeah, one point in two games off Fenerbahce. Because I feel like we dominated the first game. Our keeper's got man of the match this time around. 18 shots, 11 on target. Let's have a look at those stats. No clear-cut chances, which is maybe the big thing. Three half chances and six long shots, you know, not ideal. Um, so their defensive formation worked to get them the 0-0 that they were maybe looking for. But that puts uh, pressure on us for the rest of this Europa League group stage because we now need... Um, catch is injured, Barisic injured, that's not, n neither are actually too bad. Um, we need to get at least a win from our last two games now. Well, there's, I think, before a point would have been enough. 
I think a win should still do it for us because they've still got to play Chelsea as well. Have they got Chelsea at home or Chelsea away? Chelsea away. So, you know, that helps us out a bit. So we host Chelsea in the next game there, but we're going to get straight to Aberdeen now. So we come into this game with a small injury crisis. We've got David Ray got injured in training, so he's out for two to four weeks with a groin strain. Uh, Katic and Barisic obviously hold up with small injuries at the end of the last game. They'll be back for the next. Casey Palmer also injured, and Paslak also picked up another injury in training. So missing, you know, four or five players who would be in or around the squad for this game. So we've got Kyle Roberts thrown in for his debut for this game. Bought from Motherwell, of course, at the start of the season. Thrown him in over Liam Kelly to get him game time. And I don't think there's a whole lot between them. We've got James Tavernier, Rob Holden, Bushiri and Guy Jan Luca. I was going to call him Gary Itter. Uh, but um, Jan Luca Itter at left back. Ross McCrory at holding midfield with Carlos Alina and Jadis in front. Malcolm and Antonio Marin comes in alongside Dominic Solanke, making off our front three. Um, this is a must-win game for us, despite all these injuries, and hopefully we can keep uh, Kyle Roberts' goal fairly locked up. You know, he'll get game time. Um, that's all important. He's done well in the reserves, but we need to be able to make sure that we can keep no real chances going his way. That would be bad for us, I think. Um as Malcolm picks up a knock as well, because, you know, that's just what we need as well, is another player coming up with an injury. Um, looks like a cut hand. He really should be able to play him with a cut hand. I wouldn't expect that to cause him too many footballing problems. Maybe an issue in rugby or American football or something, but not this kind of football. Is Itter whips it, but only against Tassan. And his clearance is poor. Ross McCrory launching forward. And Bong picks up and clears. He finds Moa. That's a decent ball in behind. And it's Hassan, the man who won the ball. Kyle Roberts with a big save on his debut 11 minutes in. I was saying we need to keep that door closed. And the Northern Irishman called into action early. Carlos Salina clears the corner. Cleared away again. Only as far as Hassan. Again, Hassan all over our defence right now. Free kick. I was going to say it's outside the box. But Marin with the foul. Aberdeen keeping on the pressure, Rado with the free kick, whips it in, Tavernier away, Jadis, can we hit on the break here, as Jadis brings it out, absolute bursting forward, decent ball in, it's Alanke. he's hit the post, he's offside anyway, oh we need to demand a bit more here I think, see if we can get a good reaction, we do indeed, lots of focus there, can we get a response in terms of the stats and the chances, Maybe not so much. Um, Kyle Roberts with a goal kick. Plays it out to Rob Holding. Stalin on it a bit here, Rob Holding. Finds the Carlos Elena eventually. Ross McCrory up to Malcolm. Switch ball to Antonio Marin. <clears throat> Crunch and challenge and Itter picks up. Jadis back to Antonio Marin. Plays it across for Malcolm. Tavernier getting in his way a little bit, but that's a great cross. And Marin puts just wide. Really good effort. Great cross from Malcolm from the deep position. Gets on his favoured left foot from there, of course. And whips it in to the back stick, but no damage done in the end to the Aberdeen defence. That's a straight red for Ross McCrory. Absolutely no way that is a straight red ref. Okay, um, let's work this one out. Do you know what? I think we'll play on as we are until half time and work it out then. Because I'm probably going to have to make changes with Malcolm being injured as well. So maybe just go a bit more narrow and work it out from there. Rotson plays it into Rabo. Bushiri's going to get that nice and easy. And Itter back to Rocky Bushiri into Carlos Elena. Jadis. Carlos Elena again. Marin. Brings it forward, he's gone past a couple here. Finds Malcolm, that's a penalty ref. We get the penalty, and Jadis coming to take this. If I remember my penalty takers correctly, it's the one thing I didn't actually update when I done my set piece takers, which is a bit silly of me to do. But Jadis slots home, 1-0 Rangers with 10 men here. And that puts us in the driving seat for now. We might have 10 men. 
but we've got quality. And we've got quality in abundance, even though we've got all those injuries. And that puts us 1-0 to the good at Pataudry. It's not been a great performance so far. I don't feel that red card really was a red card. But Rabble brings it inside. That's a decent effort. It's just wide of Kyle Roberts' post. And continues to be 1-0 to us. Bit nerve-wracking though when they get into there and take a strike. Because they do go in a fair amount. Um, Jan will get her not having a great game. But her back up there is Finn Eric Point. Who I don't really want to put in right now. Ross McCrory not happy with my feedback. He's not on the pitch anyway. Right, so how do we sort this out? How do we make something of this? Do you know what I'm going to do right now? Is I'm going to put Solanke here, Madden here the now, bring Malcolm back. We'll put Madden in as a advanced forward. Malcolm will come off for Fellini. And we'll just go a bit more narrow. Focus play through the middle. And slightly narrow, fairly narrow. Will do us. Start the second half. Slanky, Madden kick off. Itter, Jadis, Carlos Alina. As the highlight comes to an end. Slightly nervous about this. I can't remember the last time I played without wingers successfully. Itter with a good challenge. Jadis launches forward, finds Madden. He's got a decent ball on him. Clears away by McKenna though. Ferguson. Bong. Moa. Tavernier trips over his own feet, um, but the pass straight to Rob Holding, launch forward for Madden, cleared away to Jadis, Carlos Elena, launch forward, Madden's got pace here, and a bit of space, Antonio Madden, Joe Lewis equal to it, nerve wracking stuff, Carlos Elena to whip this one in, finds Bushiri at the back post, and Joe Lewis again, Coming out to collect that one. I'm trying to work out what's our best options here. I think we're going to bring on Dejerlik and bring him on for um, who's ever's the most tired here. Really, either one of them. We'll bring on Elena, if Elena, for Dejerlik and just try and freshen things up. See if we can just, you know, work this one out. Um, Aberdeen making changes as well up top Bruce Anderson coming on for Sam Crosgrove never know how I feel about guys like Bruce Anderson and Conor McClellan coming on because you don't play them often enough to really get an idea but uh, Bruce, McLaren, uh, Bruce Anderson rather has played a lot of games for them as Bong plays it to Shinny back to Bong Moa plays it across finds Rotson in all sorts of space nobody closing them down it's in the back of the net. It's going to go down as a Kyle Roberts own goal, I think. On his debut, undeserved. Moa hits the crossbar. It comes down, hits Roberts on the shoulder and goes in. We need to change things now. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to push Fellaini up. Jadis into this role here. In fact, no, what we're going to do is swap then Jadis and Djerlik around. Put you on to attack. Make Fellaini a ball winner. And we're going to bring on John Hughes for Madden. Swap Hughes and Solanke around. Hopefully that works. Lewis. Once he's clear to Bong. Moa. Again, finds Bruce Anderson this time. That's got to be offside, ref. Has to be offside. Uh, I'm still convinced that's offside, you know. No claims for that. I wonder if we'll get the replay on it. Ah, Rob Holden's played him on. The whole defence has stepped up apart from Rob Holden. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, come on. Right, they've been forced into 
an injury sub as well. So let's go very attacking. See if we can get this out. Because we need a win. Celtic just aren't going to drop enough points that we can go to Aberdeen and drop points here. Bong. Shinny. Back to Bong. Campbell. Bong again. And they're just playing it between the two of them and nobody's closing them down. It's a problem we're not having a halfback. Fellini eventually clears. Solanke plays it on to John Hughes. We're on the counter here actually. Quite a lot of numbers forward. Played in for Jadis. Yes! Back in. And back level. We're going to go positive again. Jadis not the one that I thought would be making that run there. But who cares? Solanke found Hughes. It was a bit wide, but Hughes ran on it well. His decision to go inside here was good. He found Jadis. Hits it first time. He had three strikers on one defender if he wanted to play it into one of them. But he goes for the strike. And he scores. Frustrated by the feedback. Why are we frustrated by the feedback? James Tavernier on a 5.9 as well. Not had a good game. James Tavernier here. Janis with a brace though has kept us in it. Which would keep us three points behind Celtic if I'm right in thinking. Bong. Rado. Two points rather. Hassan. Ah, oh, come on. He's had a good game, Hassan, to be fair. We've hardly conceded a goal all season. In every game that we've conceded goals, we concede three. It's really, really quite worrying. Um, and it always seems to come at the time where we've got a lot of injuries or a lot of changes to the team. You know, the Celtic game um, was a similar defence to this, actually. In fact, it was pretty much the same defence, but Tavernier on a 5.8 will be getting fined. Um, but here he is with a free kick. Can he get a decent ball? No, he can't. Bellic nods it away. But to be fair to the whole team, they've been fairly slack. The red card, I think, has had a big effect on this. Um, but even then, Aberdeen were still really maybe the better team before that. It's all over. 3-2 uh, defeat for us, which puts us five points behind. Not good enough will be the answer. Um, when are we going to come back? I will have a look as soon as this loads. But it's taking forever right now. As we go to schedule, I'll tell you what, we come back in one game time. Uh, it's a couple of weeks away right enough because we've got an international break so we'll play St Johnston off camera and then we'll come back for Chelsea and Celtic um, mirroring uh, previous episodes um, that's Europa League uh, game against Chelsea at home and the Betfred Cup final against Celtic hopefully we've got um, players back by then because that's not good we're five points behind in the league now um, which is frustrating um, if you enjoyed this episode though guys hit like, hit subscribe and I'll hopefully catch you all next time